Anxious bride falls asleep on her wedding night and wakes to a nightmare. Anyone who's ever had to plan their wedding can tell you that it's no mean feat. Between all the things you have to look for, flowers, dresses, venue, cake, etc., and the waiting, it can drive you crazy. Still, most people will agree that once the day comes, all that effort and expectant waiting is more than worth it. Angie Verhul had done all that. She'd sorted out everything in her head. All she had to do now was wait for that special day, the day she'd been planning so perfectly. Unfortunately for Angie, before her wedding night could even begin to come together, she awoke in the middle of the night and beheld something unthinkable, and it changed everything. Angie Verhul was a school teacher working in South Middle School in her hometown of Waukee, Iowa. Ever since she was a young girl, she dreamed of her perfect wedding, dreamed of meeting the man of her dreams, falling in love and marrying him in front of all her friends and family. As a woman in her mid-twenties, Angie had met her share of frogs, but she still held out hope that one day she'd meet her Prince Charming. She found him in 30-year-old Justin Michael. Justin was a banker working at Wells Fargo and was everything Angie could have wanted. Smart, funny, good-looking, and successful. In September of 2013, Justin asked Angie to marry him. Unsurprisingly, she said yes, and the two were engaged. They settled on a year-long engagement. This gave them time to plan everything properly and save up enough money for the impending nuptials, which was looking to become quite the shindig. At Wells Fargo, Justin's co-workers were ecstatic and congratulations filled the workplace. They all liked Angie and were happy for both of them. Of course, there was one person at Wells Fargo who was not pleased by the announcement. As the rest of the department enjoyed a congratulatory cake, he sat in his cubicle, seething with anger. It was May 8, 2014, nine months after Justin and Andy had announced their engagement. They were staying at Justin's parents' house, saving their pennies and looking forward to the big day. But as the two of them slipped into bed that fateful night, neither would have any idea the horror that would await them the very next morning. Justin's mother, Marie Michael, was awakened during the night by a frightful sound coming from down the hall. She heard a bedroom door open and then a loud pop, pop, pop. Before she could even jump out of bed to investigate, she heard Angie scream. She knew immediately that something terrible had happened. 30-year-old Justin Michael had been shot four times as he slept next to his fiance. When Angie woke to the horrible sound, she looked around, but there was no one else in the dark that night, only her poor Justin laying there dead with gunshot wounds to his neck, face, and temple. His mother immediately called the police. The police were baffled. No one had seen who'd come in to shoot Justin. They originally suspected Angie, but the notion was dismissed when they interviewed her and saw how hopelessly distraught she was. Whoever it was that had broken into the home and killed Justin, they had exercised a bit of overkill by shooting him in the head with an assault-style rifle. Angie Verhul overheard the officers talking about a wide range of possible scenarios drugs money gambling etc for a moment angie thought to herself was i about to marry somebody with no idea who he actually was she quickly disregarded these thoughts she knew justin he couldn't be involved in anything like that the killer had staged the scene to make it look like it was a normal run-of-the-mill burglary gone wrong they could tell that much at least who would do such a thing who would have gone through all that trouble and killed justin so violently Passion was more than a motive here, and police now had to investigate some of those frogs that Angie had once dated. Meanwhile, local police were alerted to a totaled vehicle that had been abandoned near Highway 141. It had happened about 30 minutes after the shooting, and the car was abandoned by the time emergency workers and police arrived on the scene. There were, however, two magazines of ammunition matching the brand and casings left at the scene found near the crash site. Whoever the murderer was, he obviously left in such a hurry that he crashed his car. The vehicle belonged to one David Moffat, an ex-boyfriend of Angie, who had been dumped over text message just as Angie had begun dating Justin Michael. What's more, Moffat, who has a degree in accounting, had been working at Wells Fargo, in the same department as the deceased. Investigators also found a shoebox near the scene of the crash that contained an Amazon Kindle and a March 2014 receipt made out to Andrew Wegner, another former boyfriend of Angie's. This raised more questions. Why would Wegner be driving Moffat's car? The police decided to investigate the car owner first. They got a search warrant for David Moffat's computer and went to his home. There they found evidence that Moffat had made a fake ID containing 
his picture and Wagner's name they arrested Moffat on suspicion of murder what they found afterward only managed to confirm their suspicions as it turned out Moffat had purchased the murder weapon from a store in Sigourney also using Wagner's name and the fake ID he had a plan he was going to kill Justin Michael and point all the blame on Andrew Wagner a search also uncovered a whole notebook of surveillance notes that suggested he had watched Justin's house many times prior to the murder a forensic computer expert examined Moffat's computer and found that his Google searches revealed much about his plan to murder Angie's fiance searchers like the best murder guide you'll ever need how to get away with murder hiring a hitman love triangle murders how thick is the human skull traffic cameras and crimes and the particularly telling what does hell look like at his subsequent trial prosecutors made it very clear that David Moffat had pulled the trigger with intent to kill and had planned the crime well in advance perhaps the very moment that his co-worker had announced his happy engagement to Moffat's ex-girlfriend his defense lawyer submitted that Moffat didn't know right from wrong at the time of the crime his lawyer insinuated that David Moffat was mentally ill at the time of the murder and didn't understand the gravity of his actions due to the side effects of his antidepressant medications Moffat couldn't seem to explain why he developed the homicidal ideations that ended in Justin's death in January of 2014 Moffat left Wells Fargo for unknown reasons he then told his therapist that he was having thoughts about killing a person the doctor put him on antipsychotic drugs for a short time but Moffat quit seeing the therapist nevertheless he continued sporadically taking medicines in July of 2015 27 year old David Moffat was found guilty of first-degree murder in the death of Justin Michael Moffat was also found guilty of first-degree burglary Angie and Justin's family members and friends hugged one another after the verdict was read describing it as a feeling of closure and justice was served please share this video with your friends below